Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Um, so we're going to be talking about behavioral analysis uh, tonight. And um, how many of you are using any type of behavioral analytics today? Maybe one, <laughs> maybe one and a half. Okay, great, great. Well, uh, we're going to talk about uh, both behavioral analytics as well as behavioral analysis itself. Uh, so hopefully you'll find it very useful. A little bit about myself. Uh, so I'm Tom Shapiro. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I am the CEO of Strategy, which is a design, uh, branding, and marketing agency in Burlington. Um, uh, also came out with a book which was published last year, Rethink Your Marketing. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's all about lateral thinking and, and different ways of approaching your marketing to unleash growth. Uh, also, the founder of a neural marketing group here in the Boston area. So if any of you are interested in things like psychology or behavioral science or uh, neuroscience, uh, we cover a lot of those topics as it applies to marketing. Uh, we meet, we try and meet every few months. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, let me know. Uh, at, my, at the last agency that I was at, I was the 85th employee. And we applied a lot of those same principles uh, and grew it from 85 employees to over 700 employees in a five-year span. So hopefully we can, we can uh, translate some of those learnings for you tonight as well. So let's jump into it. So we're all awash in data, right? We're drowning in data. There's data everywhere. And how do we make sense of what's happening on our website? What's, what, you know, is our website successful? Is it not successful? If, if you are part of an agency and you're looking after your clients, you know, how are you assessing the success of your clients' websites? And probably a lot of you use Google Analytics, right? Can I see a show of hands? How many of you use Google Analytics? Okay, so about, probably about 95% of you are using Google Analytics and, and that's pretty standard. So here's the thing. Uh, Google Analytics is fantastic for certain things. It's fantastic for uh, telling you how many page views there were, where people came from, or how they're going through your website, right? Um, but we really need to go beyond Google Analytics. Google Analytics will only tell you half of the story. We need to go beyond the what, which is Google Analytics, and understand the why, and that's where behavioral analysis comes in. Behavioral analysis answers why they're there. So. There's something that, that's really important for you to understand, and that's that page views and things like page views mean absolutely nothing. And I'm going to prove it to you. So a few years ago, we launched a, a blog post that was pretty popular and then gained a lot of popularity, a lot of popularity, it went viral, and in the end, it got over 81,000 page views, right? So 81,860 unique page views. So if you had a blog post that achieved 81,860 page views, you would think it was a success, right? Everyone would, right? I'm telling you, I consider it a complete and absolute failure. This was a total failure for us. Why? Because when I look at what it did for our business, how many leads did it bring in? Show of hands, how do you think it, it brought in about 100 leads for us? Okay, how about 50 leads? How about 25? How about two? How about zero? Yes, <laughs> it was a big fat donut. It brought in zero leads. So, you know, to me, yeah, 81,000 pages, it sounds impressive. You know, you talk about it, you can brag about it, it sounds fantastic. From a Google Analytics perspective, it's a huge success. But for our business, it was a total failure. So, this is part of the reason why Google Analytics will tell you part of the story, will tell you half of the story, but in order to understand what your websites are experiencing and what they need and, and whether your website is being successful for your organization or not, you really need to understand the other half of the equation. And I'll give you another example of where Google Analytics just doesn't cover everything that, that you need to know. So one of our clients is an enterprise software company and when we took them on, they were very, very proud of their knowledge hub. So they had this knowledge hub, knowledge center, lots and lots of resources and they were very proud of how how many page views they were getting in their Knowledge Hub, right? Lots of people came to their Knowledge Hub. Fantastic, right? 
Well, <laughs> we started looking at the behavioral analytics in their knowledge hub, and we wanted to see, okay, once they get there, once they're there, what happens? What do they do? What are, pe what are people doing in their knowledge hub? Are they really getting value out of it? And what we found was over the course of the prior month, inside their knowledge hub with hundreds and hundreds of resources, they had three clicks. Three clicks, total failure, right? In fact, they were doing more damage to their brand than good by having this knowledge hub. Because the knowledge hub was clearly something that people thought that they were interested in, right? That's why they were getting so many page views to it. Because people thought that they were interested in it. But when they arrived and they looked around, they didn't like the content, right? They didn't like what was there. They didn't like the layout. They didn't like anything about it. And so they weren't clicking anything. And so it was a total failure. And what we need to do is really look deeper. What's the actual experience that people are having inside your website or your client's websites? We need to read their digital body language, right? It's just like, think about it. Like, you go to a party, right? You talk to someone. Well, how you talk to them depends on how they're reacting to you. If you see that they're kind of looking away and you know, they're, they're not really paying attention, you, you, you try and change the conversation, right? You try and, and bring them back so that they're engaged. Or if they're really engaged, you know, you might embellish your story a little bit, right? But you, you're reading body language all the time. That's how we as human beings communicate with one another. We're constantly reading body language all the time. But we're not doing it when it comes to websites. Right? It's kind of weird. So this is where behavioral analysis comes in and it, it fulfills that role. It's just like we're at a party and we're reading uh, the body language of our website visitors and then that gives us the power to respond and to react and to change and adjust what's on our website um, so that people have a better experience. So there are lots and lots of benefits to behavioral analysis. Here's some. Gain a deeper understanding of your audience. Identify the triggers that influence behavior. Increase engagement. Increase conversions. Increase user acquisition. Increase retention. Make better website design decisions. And justify your design choices. So if you're reporting it to someone else, it gives you the ammunition, it gives you the data to justify every decision that you make. So what our agency does is we always, always, always start with the audience. Always. Why? Because that, that's who we're marketing to, right? We need the audience to have a fantastic experience in order for our website to be successful. So we start with them. And with your, with your audience, you never want to just lump everyone together, right? You want to segment them. Because that way, you can communicate more effectively with them. You can connect with them more deeply, right? Because not everyone's the same. You can always segment audiences. And so... Whether you're segmenting them by geography, whether you're segmenting them by sex, whether you're segmenting them by age, whether you're segmenting them by job title, by industry, it really doesn't matter, but make sure that you're understanding the different segments that you have among your audience and you'll be more effective in being able to communicate with them so that they have a fantastic experience. So I'll give you an example. So Domo is a dashboard uh, software company and what they used to have on the website was this fantastic way to self-segment yourself. And so when I would come to their website, I would click on marketing. And everything that they would communicate to me would be about marketing. It would be how their software solves my marketing problems. Case studies were all about marketing, right? Testimonials were all marketing. Every, everything in the website that I would see would be about solving marketing problems. Now, if I was in finance, I would have different challenges. I would have different problems that I'm trying to solve. I would need to have a different conversation with them. I would need different solutions. So you click finance and you have a completely different experience on their website. That's very smart. So they understood the value of audience segmentation for people having better experiences on the website. So, when we're looking at audience segments, the next logical step is to develop personas, right? You want to develop personas. You might have two or three or four personas per audience segment, right? So a show of hands, how many of you have documented personas where if I asked you right now to show me physically, not in your head, not that you know your audience, not that you know who you're marketing to, but do you have it documented, all your different personas? Show of hands. One, two, 
maybe three, okay, four. <laughs> so, so, so four, typically, so, so I speak around the country and I ask that question of audiences a lot. And typically, you'll get about 5% of the audience raising their hands, about 5%. On a good day, 10%. So what does that mean for you? That means if you document your personas, right? You're going through this process of segmenting your audience and then within those segments, documenting your personas, you're gonna be well ahead of your competition because most companies do not do this. They might think that they know who their audience is. They might talk about it, but do they document it and then do they develop strategies for connecting deeply with each? A lot of them do not. So we wanna go deep. Right? We want to go beyond the who and understand why. So why are they visiting your website? These are the questions we want to be asking. What are the problems that they're trying to solve? What specific behaviors should they be displaying while they're on your website? What specific actions should they be taking? Once you can start answering these questions, you know how to adjust and refine your website. And when you're looking at personas, what I would say is even those 5% or those 10% who are documenting their personas, many of them are doing it wrong. If you Google personas and persona templates, what you'll find is there's so much talk about, oh, you need to know everything about them. Are they 35 years old? Are they 40 years old? Are they 45 years old? Right? Do they live uh, in Philadelphia? Do they live in Boston? We don't have any of that because we don't care. What do we care about? We care about the why. Why are they on our website? I don't care if you're 35 or 40 or 45 or 50. It makes no difference. Why are you on our site? That's what we need to know and that's how we're going to sell to you. So 50% of a persona really should be talking about what are their goals? What are they trying to achieve? Right? That's the why they're on your website. They're there for a reason. They're there to accomplish something. They're there to solve a problem. So what are the problems? So for instance, with uh, Mackenzie here, her problems are pressure for aggressive growth numbers, right? She has to report into her CEO, lots of pressure to, to, to show numbers and growth every quarter, doesn't understand why conversions aren't higher, they keep trying and trying and trying, why aren't conversions higher, too much to do, too little time, too few resources, she keeps asking for more budget, she doesn't get it, the CEO just doesn't get it, competitors are growing more sophisticated all the time, um, overwhelmed by data without the associated insights, so she has all the data in the world, it's not giving her the answers that she needs, right? Confused by a changing tech landscape. She's being called on from uh, tech companies every single day. She doesn't have time for it, right? And, and this is a real live persona, right? And am I talking about her being 35 or 36 or 37 years old? No. Because it doesn't change how we're going to market to her. So just focus on the why. Focus on the why, and then you can really start marketing more effectively. And then what you're going to do is, okay, Mackenzie, why would she come up with this challenge, right? What, what, what's the point where she realizes she needs to solve a problem? And then you walk through every stage of what she does when she realizes that. Or any persona, right? So you're going to build a user story per persona all the way through them realizing they have a problem that they need to solve, all the way through them coming to your website and exactly what you want them to do while they're on your website. So some people call it a customer journey in the agile world. It's called a user story, but the idea is, you know, you want to map this story all the way through, persona by persona, and Mackenzie might have a very, very different journey than some of your other personas. Okay, so we focused on the audience and personas and understanding them as much as possible, as deeply as possible. Now let's look at the software and analytics side of things. So we're going to analyze, once they're on our website, what are they doing? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some behavioral analytics software to the website. So there are many, many different packages that you could use. They're all fantastic. Uh, our agency uses an application called Mouseflow, uh, and you can find it at mouseflow.com. Uh, there's also Hotjar. You can find it at hotjar.com. Um, there's also Full Story, um, or if you just want to kind of dip your toes in the water, uh, you want something more basic, there's an application called Crazy Egg. Very, very basic, but, but you know, also good. Um, and what you want to do is use this software to analyze everything that they're doing while they're on your website. So the first thing that we'll look at is scroll mapping. 
So they come to your website, they come to a page, how far down the page are they scrolling? And we want to know exactly how far down the page they're scrolling, right? And so you can see here, red indicates uh, very popular, of course, it's at the top of the page, so everyone's there. But then as you scroll and you scroll and you scroll, you can see the heat map changes, right? And you can see where the drop-offs are. And, and if you hover your, your, uh, your mouse, you can see to the exact pixel what the percentage of the page visitors are who, who make it down that far on the page. And so that enables you to understand where people are dropping off, where they're losing interest, right? But it's also interesting because, okay, a lot of people right here, they're, they're dropping off between environmental stewards and authenticity in this particular blog post. So just keep that in the back of your, your uh, head. So we're also going to use behavioral analytics to look at click mapping, heat mapping, and hover mapping. So this is looking at exactly where their cursor is on the page, so where they're paying attention, because we think with our cursors. Okay, so you can, you can tell a lot from where the cursor is on the page to what people are thinking um, and, and how the, the movement of the cursor, uh, you know, what, what, that, what that movement is indicates a lot of their thought patterns. Um, and so we look at, okay, where are they clicking, where are they hovering, and let's go back to uh, the paragraph, authenticity, and we see, hmm, so this shows a lot of engagement right here on the authenticity paragraph inside this particular blog post that we were just looking at. But what's interesting is, okay, th this is the most engaged paragraph on the whole page, yet that's where we saw the drop-off. So you always have to cross-reference your data. If you're only looking at scroll mapping, it's not going to give you the whole story. If you're only looking at heat mapping, it's not going to give you the whole story. So make sure to keep cross-referencing and cross-referencing your data. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that we shouldn't give up on the authenticity paragraph just because we saw a drop-off in the scroll mapping, right? A lot of people might not have seen it, right? And now that we know that once people do see it, the ones who do see it are highly engaged with it, maybe we need to move it up a page. Maybe we need to draw more attention to it with a graphic, with a video, with a highlight, with a call-out, right? So it gives you indicators as to how you might be adjusting your page and, and test it. So we have a client who puts on events uh, uh, around the country and their, so their websites are, are totally geared towards getting people to sign up for their events, right? Register for their events. So you, you go to the Y attend page for one of their events and it says grab your ticket and over this period of time there were 33 clicks. Okay, fine. And we keep scrolling down the page, and then there's another call to action. Meet the speakers, only 19 clicks. So we went from 33 clicks down to 19 clicks. And that's actually pretty normal, right? As people scroll down the page, you're going to lose people going down the page. They'll drop off. You'll never increase numbers as you scroll down the page, but they'll only decrease. And so uh, it's not surprising that the number of clicks lower on the page decreased by that much from 33 to 19. But then something strange happened. We keep scrolling down the page, and they're offering a justification letter. So this is a letter which you can present to your boss to get budget to attend their event, which costs like 1500 bucks. 40 clicks. So it beats everything, and it's all the way down at the bottom of the page. There's a lot of scrolling you have to do to get even find this. So what does this indicate? So there are two times as many clicks on something all the way down at the bottom of the page as higher up on the page, the speaker's call to action, right? So clearly what we have to do is we have to move the justification letter CTA button up the page. It's a no-brainer, it's obvious. This is why people are on this page. This is what they respond to, this is what they love. So imagine if we put this all the way at the top of the page, probably get 80 clicks. All right, so Again, with behavioral analytics, let's look at session recording. So one other thing that you can do with the software is you can record the people who are actually visiting your website and see everything they're doing. Now, it's all anonymous, right? So all you can see is their cursor going through the site, um, but you see the screen, you see their cursor, and you see what's happening with their visit through your website. This is not people in a lab, this is not testing, these are your actual site visitors that you're watching. 
And so, for instance, uh, with an application like this, which is full story, um, you can actually, if, if the person is in your database, it can even map it to the actual person. And it will tell you every single thing that they do, whether they're clicking, whether they're hovering, whether they're uh, navigating to a different page, whether they're rage clicking something, you know, is supposed to be clickable and, and is not, right? And they just keep clicking, clicking, clicking. Um, and it'll give you the entire story right here. So this is, this is a, a sample within our own uh, blog where we were tracking uh, people in this blog. And normally, the normal behavior that we see for people in our blog, for site visitors coming to our blog, is vertical. So people go down, right? Site visitors go down the page, and then they go up the page, and then they go down the page, and then they go up the page, and then they go down. It kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? Like when you're reading a blog, you read, you read, you read, and then, oh, you want to go back and check something that you read a few paragraphs earlier, right? So you go back up. And then you want to go back down to where you were. And, and so we see this a lot, this, this vertical going up and down the page. But then we see this. What the heck is this? Right? I mean, it's going all over the place. This person's going berserk. They were going left, right, diagonally, all over the place. And so what we discovered was there was a pattern to the behavior, right, the digital body language of our site visitors when they would come across a video on the page. And they would become more engaged. And what's fascinating is they would become more engaged with the page with the content even if they didn't click on the video. So even without watching videos and becoming engaged that way, they became more engaged with the content. Well, what does that tell us? It tells us, ah, we need to add more videos to, to our blog because it's driving more engagement, which is what we want. Another way to use behavioral analytics is to look inside your forms and figure out what's working in your forms and what's not working. And so with Google Analytics, what can that tell you? It can tell you whether people came to that page, right, with the form. It can tell you whether they clicked to submit the form. But that's it. But if you really want to know where your form is working and what parts of your form are not working and are causing abandonment rates to go up, that's where behavioral analytics can, can be really helpful. So this is a, an example of hot jar where you're looking at field by field by field through a form how someone is going from field to field what the percentage is and where the drop-off rate is. And so here, there's a 40% drop-off when you ask them for their phone number. Do you want to increase conversions on this form? Get rid of the field asking for the phone number. It's obvious, right? So these are some of the benefits that behavioral analytics can bring to you. You can also do this not only on a form, but across your entire website. So if you define a funnel, a conversion funnel in your website, then you can look page to page to page, where's the drop off? And then, so how many of you, when you look at your Google Analytics, you're just looking at the, the default view, you're not filtering in any way? Okay, some of you. So what we notice with a lot of companies is they tend to look in the aggregate at their Google Analytics, right? Uh, or any analytics that, that they're uh, analyzing. And the problem with that is that it typically doesn't match your audience. So for instance, if you sell only in the United States, why would you include data from anyone outside of the United States in what you're, what you're analyzing, right? The same with you know, looking at regions. Uh, the same with looking at, um, say, if you want to look at first time visitors to your website versus repeat visitors to your website, right? Why would you want to separate that? Because they're necessarily going to display different digital behavior on the website. If you're mixing first time visitors to your website and repeat visitors to your website, and you're, you're glomming that data together and you're looking at it in the, in the aggregate, you're gonna totally pollute your data. What, what, what insights can you derive? Because they're totally different audiences. Coming to a website for the first time, you're learning, you're figuring it out, you don't know. If you've been to your website four, five, six times, it's very intuitive. You know exactly where to go for what you want. You're going you're gonna to display very, very different digital behavior. And so you need to filter, filter, filter. Make sure you're filtering your data so that you, you're uh, accumulating very accurate insights into your audience. And so 
all of these behavioral analytics applications offer you plenty of options for filtering, whether it's by country, whether it's by city, whether it's by uh, visitor type, whether, it, you know, you can even tag it for a specific campaign. Um, another way that um, behavioral analysis can be very beneficial to you is setting up different triggers in your website based on the behavior that your users display. So for example, in, in our agency, in Stratabeats agency, in our blog, what we do is if you, if you go to one of our blog posts and you're consuming one of our blog posts and you scroll all the way down, about 80% down the blog post, we're going to hit you with an offer to subscribe to our newsletter. So we're not gonna hit you when you're up at the top of the page because how do you know if you like the content or not? You might hate it, right? We don't know, you don't know. So you probably just click out of it because you just want to get to the content. So instead, what we want is we want you to show us your digital body language. Just like if we're at a party, I want to make sure you're engaged, right? Well, same here. We want to make sure you're showing the right digital body language here and showing us you're engaged, you really like the content, you're scrolling all the way down. Our blog posts tend to be pretty long. So if you're scrolling 80% of the way down, you're, you're, you're pretty engaged. And then we're going to hit you with this. So this one mechanism, this one mechanism alone increased our opt-ins by 300%. So again, just by reading digital body language and then presenting them with something that's contextually relevant based on the behavior that they're displaying can be very powerful. And then, looking at behavioral analysis in a broader sense, let's go beyond your website. So if you use an application like HubSpot or, uh, in our case, we use SharpSpring, you can map not only everything that someone is doing on your website, but also everything that they're doing in their email communications with you as well. You send a newsletter out, you can see exactly what they're doing, and then you can see where they go next in your website, and then they go back to your newsletter. And you can see the, the whole roadmap of their interactions with your brand. And so it takes it even beyond your own website. So there's lots and lots of uh, behavioral analytics software, like I mentioned. Uh, here, here are a few. Mouseflow is what we use a lot. We also use uh, Hotjar. We have used Concura. Um, the full story is fantastic. It might be a little bit more on the uh, expensive side. As I mentioned, Crazy Egg is, is more basic. And so if you're just getting started, you just want to dip your toes in the water, it's a, it's a great starting point. Um, but what I'd say is this. Um, so. There's a lot of talk about conversion optimization, right? And, and you should be converting, converting, converting. And if you don't see conversions on your website, oh, you gotta optimize and optimize and optimize. If you do that without doing behavioral analysis, you're going to, you're going to mistake a lot of behavior of what's going on on your website. And, and I'll, I'll tell you a story about one of our largest clients. So when they first came onto our website, they came onto the website, and they left. And then they came to back to our website, and they left. And they came back to our website, and they left. And they kept coming back to our website. They came to our website 24 times. We know, because we, we, we track, we have IP detection software. So we know exactly what they did every single time. We know how many computers at their company they used. We know exactly which pages they were on for how many seconds. And we have the, the, the video session recordings of, of all this, right? 24 times they came back to our website. How many conversions do you think we had on our website on those 24 visits? Any guesses? One. Zero. We had zero. We had zero website conversions, yet they became one of our largest clients. And so that's, that's part of the reason why you really want to go beyond looking at just Google Analytics or looking at just conversion optimization or just looking, looking narrowly at, at your website data. Bring behavioral data into the equation. Bring behavioral analysis into the way that you're judging and measuring the success of your website. And, and it can really transform the way that, that you approach your website, the way you update the website, the way that you refine your website over time, and the success of your website. Okay, well thank you very much. Anyone have any questions?
I'm not sure that I understand the question. So the question is, you're, you're achieving Google page one rankings. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you're not seeing conversions from that traffic. Sure, so then it, I think it goes back to the user story, right? So why is someone searching on that term or those terms, why? What experience are they looking for? And is your website giving them, delivering that experience that answers their query intent? Do, do you think it is? So you're saying that you're ranking on terms that are not driving traffic? Yeah. Okay. So that's a whole other story. That's, that's you know, looking at SEO and, and search engine optimization. So you want to make sure that you're optimizing your site for keyword phrases and topics where there's a lot of interest, right? Or, or at least where there's an alignment of their query intent with what you're offering, what you can deliver, right? Where you can deliver a superior experience and fulfill their, their query intent. And so if you're ranking number one on terms but no one is searching on those terms, you need to be, that, that means they're not thinking that way. Um, because the way, the way that people search is the way they think, right? And so what you might have to do is maybe survey your audience or research uh, SEO search data, um, some good tools for that. You know, a, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ahrefs. It's a fantastic SEO tool for, for discovering that type of information, like, like search uh, query volumes. And, and just make sure that there's enough query volume and then you might have to adjust the, the content in your website so that you're showing up for those queries instead. But again, it, your, your website has to match what those people are hoping to, to, to experience, right? What, what they're hoping to, to, to solve or, you know, if they're, they're trying to achieve an objective, right? And so you just have to make sure that your, your, your keywords are aligned to that. Does that make sense? Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, you were talking a lot about scroll mapping and e-mapping. Yep. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the last half. Which, uh, which analytical tool that you point out was about on mobile? I'm sorry. On mobile. Oh, on mobile, okay, okay. So, and that's actually a good point. We didn't talk about that. So, you can use those same exact tools on mobile, but what, these, what, what the analytics tools do is they enable you to view mobile-only results or desktop results or tablet results. So you, you can segment your traffic and your data based and, and only look at mobile views. And so yeah, if mobile is the, is the majority of your traffic, let's say, and that, you know, that's what you want to focus on, you can easily look, look at scroll mapping, you can look at heat mapping, you can look at um, hover mapping. All of it applies equally to mobile versus desktop, but it, you do want to segment it, absolutely. Just to be a little argumentative here. Sure. On, on the example that you gave at the end, the justification error, and that's towards the end. Yeah. 
it's not only good that it's there, that it actually makes people go there and look at the rest of the website, you know, or, or your page at least. You actually find that error. It's almost like the grocery example with the milk. So that's if they know that it's there. But how do you know that something is, is down the page until you scroll down the page, right? So no, no one knows that it's there. It's not advertised at the top of the page. It's not advertised somewhere else, right? You just have to scroll and happen upon it. So the fact that people are just finding it and so many of them are, are clicking through on it indicates that there's a lot of interest in it. And so, you know, one of the things with behavioral analytics or, or any analytics is I'm not saying that if you move that up the page, you will, it's guaranteed to generate more clicks. What I'm saying is, move it up the page and test it, right? Test everything. But that, that's, a, that's an indicator that there's a, a heck of a lot of interest in it, so it's a good test. Yeah, to follow up with that, um, you, have you ever noticed that maybe people like, they don't to the, of course, the top of the page, and you notice that the most, but they kind of skip through the middle, We, I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. It, it, yeah, the, the vast majority of the time, typically, yeah, the, the top of the page is always hot because everyone goes there, right? Yeah. Uh, and then as you scroll down, it's always incremental drop-offs. Okay. Um, and that's it's pretty much consistent across the board, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm sure that there are examples, like you're saying. It's just we, we, we don't really run into them that often. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. All right, thank you.